I'm Lisa Bilyeu and I went from housewife to co-founder the billion dollar company Quest Nutrition and now president of Impact Theory. Our mission with this show is to empower you and all women to recognize you really can become the hero of your own life. Welcome to Women of Impact. For years, Tom and I had given up everything and in 2015, it was finally paying off. Quest had just become a billion dollar company, we just bought the house of our dreams and to celebrate, we popped a bottle of bubbly by our waterfall. A scene I had only dreamt about. And then, in an instant, everything changed. Within 10 minutes, my stomach started to cramp. Within 30 minutes, I found it hard to breathe from the pain. Within an hour, I couldn't even stand up. And for almost a year after that, I could barely eat anything. So due to malnutrition, my hair started to fall out. My nails became brittle. I was tired all day, every day. And the stomach cramping never ceased. Now, can I be honest? That wasn't even the worst part. The worst part was how I actually felt about myself. Yep, I'm going to say it. The emotional pain was way harder to bear than even the physical pain. I lost my confidence. I didn't feel sexy for my husband. I wasn't fun to be around. I was the cliche that money doesn't buy happiness. And that's when my entire belief system backhand slapped me in the face. And finally, I realized that no amount of success in business, relationships or life will ever bring us happiness if we are not healthy enough to actually enjoy it. Now, that fateful day was almost four years ago and I'm still battling my health. I've sought countless doctors. I've had every test unimaginable. I've changed my lifestyle, changed my diet, and one day at a time, I'm making incremental improvements. But it's ever evolving. We know more today than yesterday, and we will know more tomorrow than today. There will be new technologies tomorrow that will clarify our theories of today. We are all constantly discovering new ideas. So I am obsessed with talking about it. I'm obsessed with exploring new thinking. We must always, guys, be the student. So today I wanted to do a different kind of show. I wanted to bring together incredible women who play a part in this very important discussion. But guys, this isn't a fix all. It's not a do this to be healthy episode. We are all on a discovery. So let's do it together. All right, first up, I'd like to introduce to you the lovely Amber Coddle, AKA Chef Amber. Through her desire to change and her desire to feel better and heal with food, she founded the Source Cafe, a unique cafe that serves delicious food that happens to be healthy or healthy food that happens to be delicious. Through her online series, Cooking with Chef Amber, private sessions, catering and consultations, this woman of impact is showing us how food can taste amazing and nourish the mind, body and soul. Next up, I'd like to introduce to you the wonderful Alina Brown. After her youthful curiosity led her to discover the multifaceted world of nutrition, ancient remedies and modern integrative medicine, she couldn't help but dive headfirst into nutrition and dietetics. Now, holistic health YouTuber, host and producer of the Wellness Geek podcast, nutritional therapy student and creator of Wellness Con, it's safe to say this woman of impact is an all-round self-proclaimed wellness geek. And finally, the effervescent Dr. Jen Esquer. Wanting to help people get back into their physical bodies, she gained a doctorate in physical therapy and through her workshops, private sports therapy sessions and her mobility method program, she's showing how understanding what is going on with our bodies is the most powerful piece of knowledge for establishing health and longevity. Featured in Muscle and Fitness, Shape, Bodybuilding.com and CBS, she's empowering us all to learn how to heal ourselves. So guys, welcome to a very special edition of Women of Impact. Welcome to the show, ladies. <laughs> so excited to have you guys on and I just want to dive right in and I want to talk about the word health. Mm. Let's start there. So I know you, Amber, mm. hate the fact of using healthy cooking as a, um, as a name, as a title. Yes. Talk to me about that and why that actually you think that does us more of a disservice. Well, I think that healthy is used in um, fake ways. So something is portrayed as healthy and it's not, so it's very sneaky. Okay, there's that part of it. But then also I think that there's the stigma around 
healthy food is a steamed piece of chicken and broccoli. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it. And like, it's a, it's a, there's a diet kind of mentality or energy around the word health. So that's where I try to get away with, I don't like to be called like a health food cafe mm. because I think it's more, it's a, it's, it's a cafe and my style of cooking is how we, we nourish our body through food. And it's, it's food for nourishment and it's excitement. And my favorite word to describe food is sexy Ooh. because food is sexy, it's beautiful. We should be able to enjoy it. You know, I, I can't eat a hundred things either. I have some health challenges myself and um, I don't want to think that I'm going to be deprived forever. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I like to take that the healthy food and make it really sexy and fun and easy and accessible. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah I mean, like labeling ourselves or Label, what we yeah. do, I think can be very um, risky. And mm -hmm. especially for me, it was very detrimental because I saw myself as being a healthy person. Mm -hmm. And so as my health started to deteriorate, like I was like, but I'm healthy, but I'm healthy. Instead of going, okay, but how does my body feel? Being in tune with what is right for, you know, your actual body. It was so funny working in a clinic and there'd be like someone who comes in and they're like, well, after five miles of running, I get knee pain. And I'm like, okay, but look at how healthy your body is. You know, five miles of running. Most people can't even walk very far without having pain or something happening to their body. And I wanted to get into this idea of there's not a perfect balance in the body. There's not this symmetry that we should be striving for. It's just, it's it's like you said, it's this feeling, it's this comfort, it's this ease within the body that we want to find on our own, right? Yes. It's not something that it's like, what, how do I make myself look perfect? How do I make myself look symmetrical? Because it's not about that. And, and I tell people all the time, like your insides are all over the place. You've got a liver over here, you got, you know, it's like we have things mixed up on the inside. Why do we think on the outside we have to look perfectly symmetrical mm. and I tell people all the time and you were commenting about like all the crazy things I do with my body but I have scoliosis I didn't even know until I got an x-ray and I was like that's a joke that's not my spine wow. <laughs> um, so I have scoliosis but it's also it doesn't limit me I still do handstands I still practice one-handed handstands I do acro yoga um, and, and I continue to work with it and observe my body and see how I can continue to help it progress so that I'm not living with this always. Mm -hmm. So how do we get back to the level of just working within our body as efficiently and effectively as we can, not coming back to this exterior, you know, what it's supposed to be like and just come into what your body needs. Mm -hmm. That to me is healthy. That's so true. I mean, being in the fitness industry, it really was like, oh, you got a six pack, you're healthy. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. that was kind of the barometer. Yep. Like, oh, you can see your veins, you're healthy. Right. And I absolutely fell into that camp. I thought the same thing. And mm -hmm. it wasn't until like shit hit the fan basically that made me realize my entire belief system was wrong. Yeah. Um, and Lena, I know that you talk about like giving like one little step at a time, like doing small little increments. Cause I think that even with what we're talking about, it's always, it can feel so grand. Changing your entire way that you eat, changing how you move your body. Um, but I know that that's a big, strong message of yours. It's like one little step at a time. Can you talk to me about that? Absolutely. And speaking into what you talked about when it comes to health and the image of it, the, the association of health that we have with body image, with getting thin and weight loss and that connection, it seems so intertwined right now in our culture. And I love just absolutely what you're talking about, stepping away from that and seeing who we are as individuals and working with who we are. I know for myself growing up, body image, especially in the early 2000s, was just so thin and just having this specific idea of what it looked like. And I remember wanting to diet and associating diet with weight loss and all these things. And it wasn't until I got a little bit older that I realized, and also in my own human experience, seeing the shift in uh, what the ultimate body image was, seeing it change and morph and realizing how just trivial it was and detrimental to my own self image it was. I found the most results with my personal health with weight loss as well, but also clear skin energy when I looked at who I was, reconnecting with my ancestral background, okay. my body type, 
I was given this body from my mother who worked so hard coming from Cuba, from my father from Panama, the skin tone, everything that I didn't like before, I realized it's there for a purpose. Our bodies all evolve in their own bio-individual ways. And I find that the people that I connect with online, whether it's through the podcast or YouTube or even with WellnessCon talking about body positivity, they found a deeper connection with their wellness and health path by connecting and accepting who they are and working with it. Just like what you said, working with who you are. Yeah, absolutely. So what's that first key for you to have made that change? Feeling like you were different, looking at all these other people saying, okay, this is what people are saying is healthy, but I don't look like that. I don't come from that world. How did you make that shift to not let it bring you down, but to say, you know what, I'm going to find that answer. Um, I think the first thing with me was becoming more self-aware of myself when I got to that mental state. So for example, if I'm sitting with somebody or perfect example, Instagram, scrolling, mm. seeing other people's profiles and what they're doing. I think a big <clears throat> aha moment for me when I was experiencing a lot of um, depression and like just like getting down on myself, there was me realizing like you spend way too much time scrolling and comparing yourself and being coming more aware in each moment like okay are you following this profile because it inspires you or is it something that you're you know you're falling back on and you're you know comparing yourself to a little bit too much and so having that awareness and then catching myself and, and thinking like okay you're in this state right now you're going down that mental rabbit hole because it's sourced from more of an insecurity rather than a place of empowerment or wanting to learn more and uh, be more constructive with that um, so i think that having that self-awareness is a first step and then after that for me was making sure to follow people who did inspire me, but also were more aligned with the things that I wanted to do and maybe looked like me and maybe had more of a self-empowerment on their body types or their hair. I know for me, my hair was a huge thing. I wanted it to be straight. I wanted it to be straight all the time. And <laughs> on YouTube, there's such a huge culture of natural hair. And so I'd say, being aware of your thought process and how you react to things is the first step. And then moving towards finding a community that reflects you and that you feel a lot more welcome and comfortable in. I yeah. love all that you said. For me, it took me years into my 30s to finally like, okay, first I have to start with self-awareness, like you said, and then it's like just full on gnarly acceptance, whatever that means. Like I have to just fully accept because we all want what we can't have. I want curly hair. I want smaller boobs. I want this. And it's like, oh no, I'm going to accept this is the body. Here I am. And that comparison can put you down the rabbit hole fast. And so I do this little tool now when I catch myself when I'm tired or I'm not feeling well, that's usually when I'm more vulnerable to those type of thoughts. Mm. And so if the thoughts come in and I'm like feeling, and I'll just say to myself, cut, cut. And I'll like redo, and then I'll think of like something positive. So if I'm like, oh, I want curly hair today or I make something, then I'll think of something positive about my body and put my hand on my heart and be like, okay, here I am back with my inner being. There you are. Cause it's so easy to get disconnected from um, our inner self um, Absolutely. and start that comparing and that look at everybody else's exterior. And when you were talking, I just have to say that like, someone, um, some of my customers, my most desperate customers that come into the source are gorgeous from the outside, mm -hmm. perfect in society standards. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden, after 50 years of eating and drinking what they want, they have a liver failure, they're struggling with cancer, they've got high diabetes, they've suffered a heart attack. I mean, that list is long. They're on 15 different medicines. And so it's like the time is now, the time is now to take care of our mind, body, soul through what all we're talking about. So yes, yeah. it all goes in together. And I it think does. it comes from that inner love too, and it that does. inner acceptance. It does. And for self-awareness, like it took someone pointing it out for me. I had no idea. I would get ready in the mornings and just be like, oh, this looks awful. Oh, this is bad. Oh, this is, mm. and just like naturally be tearing everything down without even meaning to until someone was like, you know what? You're, you're creating a really negative environment. And I was like, oh, based on what I say to me is creating a negative environment for you. Mm. Like I would never want that for anyone else. So that well, was like a huge thing. You wouldn't want it for anyone else, but you didn't think about it for yourself. What the hell is that about? I mean, it's true. You let's do know. it. So I'm <laughs> yeah. And then I remember going out to dinner with my parents and my mom and I walk into the restroom and she's like in the mirror, like, oh, this is awful. And I was like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> and I then realized yeah. it in my friends and other people. Mm. And I was like, this is not okay. Yeah. 
And so I committed to myself to write two to three things I loved about myself mm -hmm. every day. And I, I requested support from my mom and my friends. And I said, if you say anything negative about yourself, I get to catch you and make you switch it. And if I say anything negative about myself, can you please catch me yes. and That's make amazing. me switch it like right in that moment? Because again, asking for support and getting that, just changing the conversation yeah. all around you, not only within mm -hmm. me, but making sure that it was changing around the people that I was surrounding myself with as well, just brought this huge new level of awareness and accountability and acceptance. And that was game changer, especially coming from like a gymnast and like everything is perfect. And every, I like had this mentality of like what perfection, oh, that perfection needed to be deadly. like. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was 100% game changer for yeah. me. I love that. I love, I love, love, love. I um, give a TEDx talk talking about the power of culture and about what you surround yourself with and how, you know, we're the average of what we surround ourselves with yeah. and how when it comes to health and wellness and all these things, when we're able to even be the change maker in our friend group saying like, let me be accountable. Can I do that for you? And making sure to be conscious of that. It can have such a huge ripple effect beyond ourselves with your family and your friends. So that's so beautiful. I love yeah. that. I've sent emails. Um, my friend and I used to do it. We used to send three things every night, um, three brags, three desires, and three things I'm grateful for. It was, it's awesome, but it, it does. It creates this environment and it puts the ripple effect, uh, the ripple effect out. Um, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty powerful. <laughs> it's so interesting that we all gravitate when we're talking about health to it really comes to our emotions and how we feel it about really ourselves. Does. And that, like that's the beginning, right? That's it, the foundation. I mean, I can't make a healthy eating choice if I'm in a funk or I'm in my own way or I'm in self-pity and woe is me is the world, I'm probably gonna make an unhealthy choice. And now catching myself when I get into like a little bit of a sadness or a funk, because it happens, we're human, right? But now I can breathe th through it and meditate. Um, but t to go back to what you're saying, Lisa, I think that like it has to start inward. I have to love myself first to want to go to the gym, to accept myself, to meditate, to eat healthy. It, it all starts inward. Absolutely. It's all inward. And I, I remember something that I learned, one of the first things that I learned when I was going into nutrition and just, I think that this is something that we learn as um, coaches, anything, is that you can't work with the client who you're trying to convince to be there. Yeah. Even oh, with your yeah. friends, you, you can't, can't yeah. get them to no. change their habits you by can't. you telling them no. all the reasons. It has to start with yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's why um, even now when I have people who are friends who are like, oh, can you help me with this? I usually wait and mm -hmm. I want to see if they're going to follow up mm -hmm. or what they really want because it has to start with you believing that. And I know that the cliche is kind of like looking in the mirror and being like, I deserve this today and all this stuff. And that works a lot of the time as well. But I feel like it can start with the smallest shift of moving away from being so mean to ourselves and being like, yeah, I ate that brownie. Yeah, yeah I got up late and I missed that run. But I'm on a journey. Mm -hmm. This life is an evolution yes. and it's just literally the next step after that. It really is. You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah like claim it. If you want to have a brownie, like now when I have something, mm -hmm. I'm like, I love this. This is nourishing my body. My body freaking loves this every cell to the core. Not like, oh my God, how many calories? I'm going to get fat. No, 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 no. Now what kind of energy is that putting in? Of course I'm going to like, you know, energetically yeah. it just like shows up on, on me. <laughs> well, and you're in that sympathetic state. Yeah. And when we're in that sympathetic state of like stress and worry and mm. all these other things, we're putting more cortisol through our body. We so are. of course we're going to be more inflamed. Exactly. So why beat ourselves up if we're going to eat something that you know, our body might not yeah. enjoy yeah. later, but you're gonna enjoy it in the moment. So enjoy it in the moment enjoy and allow it. it and allow it to be. Yeah. And that's what I always go back and tell my friends. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, listen to your body after. Yeah. If it didn't feel good, maybe you don't put that in all the time. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing to hammer home. Like, listen, people used to say Listening. that to me all the time. I was like, that's such BS. I literally used to think people that were saying that to me were making excuses for themselves. Like, listen to your body. No, I need to take a break. I need to eat that cake. Like, I honestly would just tell myself that's just an excuse because I was the opposite of like, instead of going to the sugar, I was like, no, you've got this, Lisa. You can not eat sugar for three years. And you, you, like, so I pride myself. I used to pride myself on that, which actually got me to the same result as you. My health was terrible. So it's like, it doesn't really matter what extreme you go to. Mm -hmm. um, when we started Quest Nutrition, it was doing very well. My mom was severely overweight and I would just try and get like, give her product, throw money at it. Like, I'll hire you a private chef, you know, anything you need. And it just didn't work. And then we started Impact Theory and worked on the mind. 
and it was all going back to what you said, Alina. Like I didn't, I used to try and push her, mom, come on, you like, be healthy, mom, be healthy. And then I just stopped. We started Impact Theory. She started watching our content and she chose herself to make that switch because she realized the value in herself and she made that mental switch that allowed her to lose 150 pounds. Oh, you know, but it beautiful. all starts with that mental thing. And so, yeah, like I, that's why I just think it's so important to talk about the mindset and how we feel about ourselves because I think that leads us into actually making a good change yeah. or a negative change. Yeah. yeah. And it's a journey too. It's like, it's oh, not yeah. like you snap, like we start writing affirmations and the next day it's no, one no. thing. It's because I go back and forth so much. And that's why I, I love this conversation about the first step really being, this is where I'm at and that's okay. Yeah. You know, because that is where we can open the door to taking the next steps onto self love. What is self care? What does that mean to me? What are my needs? And like doing that work because it's, you know, it's a step process. Like I wasn't like this a few years ago. I would, you know, I would just not take care of myself as much. And I just, I feel like um, on a subconscious level, I thought that that was what I deserved. Mm -hmm. And in order to actually like tap in and shift our subconscious view of ourselves and what we deserve, it can be a slower process and that's okay. You know, but going along the journey and allowing the journey with your clients knowing that that they, they fully embody and get that this is a part of a journey because I think a, a lot of times too like especially with physical therapy it's like you know I've heard so many physical therapists be like well they didn't do the work so you know that's on them they're, they're injured again or they came back and I'm like well no that's on you first of all because you didn't make them feel why it was important in their body I'm not going to do something that I don't think is important. I'm not going to do something that I don't see how that's going to connect me to my goal or make me feel better or how that's contributing to my pain. If you're just going to be like, oh, okay, that injury, just do these exercises. Like, how much am I really going to embody that if I don't feel why? Let's talk about that why. Yeah. yeah. How would you t um, tell people to approach getting to your why in the first place? Well, especially if I have a client coming to me, it's there's some kind of pain issue typically that's happening in their body and so I want to connect them to that pain first of all mm -hmm. and because we we have this label on pain too that it's bad and that I'm fearful of it and really it's not it's a signal in our body that our body highly needs so first of all coming back into that and allowing someone to be like I hear you you are in pain and it's okay we get to work through this and we get to see where the journey is going to go through and then getting them back into, okay, how can I connect to that pain? Where is that maybe coming from? And, this, and allowing them to see from their whole body's point of view and just increasing their awareness in general because where the pain is is not usually where the problem is. And so getting back to let's look at you as a whole, not as a body part. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I know I love that. When people are looking at food, um, do you think a why is important? I think a why is important when you're trying to make a change with food. Yeah, I mean, when I made my change, my why was I want I was desperate to feel better. And I mean, I was just desperate to feel better because I can't eat whatever I want. And so I wanted food that's going to nourish my body and heal my body. I wanted food to heal my body. That was my why. And I think I think it is important. Yeah, for sure. I think then you get into like mindless, mindless eating, maybe. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Without the, the why. I mean, even like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, like if I have a snack, I'm like, okay, why, why am I eating the snack right now? Okay, well, I had an extra cardio session today or lifted some weight. So, you know, a couple ounces of protein is going to feel really good right now. It's going to nourish me. And I don't usually have an extra protein snack. So that's the why for that situation, you know, instead of just like standing in front, eating whatever kale chips or kale, just mindlessly. It doesn't really matter what it is, right? So... Yeah, I mean, I think it also applies to even if it's the why of like, why am I having this cake? I mean, that's been, that was my story for probably my whole life. Food was my comfort. And I think when I finally realized how to separate that part of myself in my inner being and really look, and this is like a journey, like you said, this does not happen overnight. I mean, this took years and years and years and it's still painful. It still shows up. If like, there's something underneath, if I can get to the underneath why, it's like, okay, I'm feeling really sad and really uncomfortable. What's underneath? Why do I want to, why do I want to eat right now? I'm just sitting here with this food in front of me. Oh, right. I'm feeling, I'm feeling upset because I got triggered and I don't know. And then I can start to like really dive in and it's really putting, I'm very faithful, very spiritual. And I don't want to put 
alcohol, drugs, or food in between me and my higher power, me and my higher being, you know, or my inner being, right? And just, it's so easy not to get to the why and to that deep down feeling. It's easier to, to stuff it. It's so much easier. I did it for, oh my God, 30 something years. So much easier. And there, that's where the work starts is where you can put it, put it down for a second, take the pause and get underneath that why. And it can be a little painful and get out the journal and just, do it. Mm, yes. <laughs> that takes me to then habits because I think that that's a big problem, right? Is we've all developed habits over our childhood, what we've been taught as kids, what we've seen our parents do, what we've seen our friends do, and then what we do ourselves. Um, and it really is, I think, difficult to break free of a habit. And I think food and exercise and just taking care of ourselves, it's a needing to break an old habit and then develop a new habit. I, I would say like, when it comes to habits, I read this incredible book. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, Atomic Habit. I love it because um, going into habit change, it's like we are a culmination of habits. Even the way that I speak, the way that I have my hands this way, all that stuff. Even the affirmations that we speak to ourselves, we always uh, focus on positive affirmations, but even we can have negative affirmations that are also habits in our head. And something that, a big takeaway that I had from that book and just from my own experience with habit change is not necessarily breaking a habit, but looking to shift it or alter it. Like what is the cue that gets me to getting into the habit of a negative thought loop? Where does that stem from? Is it because my blood sugar is low? Did I eat the right thing? Is it because I'm in an environment that like stimulates that? Um, and it goes back to that self-awareness, but also instead of telling myself, stop thinking of that, I let myself begin my thought process, but try to shift what that pro thought process is. Or if it's like, I need a comfort food, that's my habit. Rather than saying, no, I'm not going to eat, I'm going to stop that habit, consider switching it out to something better. And so having that smoother transition when it comes to habits, I've seen the best results. I've seen it with my friends and especially people comment on my YouTube channel about how they uh, switched up things. Most of the comments are never, I immediately stopped this or I was able to do it over a few months. It's always been, I've been able to replace it or I've, able, I've been able to find something new in that space. I love that. I think cold turkey just comes, comes back. When I've tried to do anything cold turkey, it slaps me back in the face. Mm -hmm. So like the, the over caffeine or over coffee, you know, I'm not gonna go caffeine free tomorrow. How about I have a little bit of matcha tea? Why don't we start there? Or why not, this is my old chef career. I was like six, eight cups a day. All of a sudden I have a cup of coffee in my hand. I didn't even realize. Let me just put that down and take a pause for a second. What is a better thing? Oh, you know what, I'm just thirsty. I'm just gonna have some water right now. That feels better. <laughs> that, is, that is everything. I mean, exactly what you guys say. And I talk about like modifying things. So rather than just completely changing it out or stopping it or starting something new, what if you modified? So instead of just rolling out of bed, what if I did a couple twists in my body, mm. got my upper back moving a little bit and then got out of bed? Mm. So what if I modified the way that I did something? So instead of just getting out of my chair at work, what if I did a simple stretch? What if I had a quick little reminder so I can modify something and just making little tiny changes here and there. If I'm already gonna get out of my chair, great, maybe I get out in a different way. If I'm already gonna get out of bed, maybe I get out in a different way. And it's just starting to implement those modifications that can create big changes later on. And it's more about what I say, too, it's more about the consistency rather than the time that you're going to devote to something. Okay. So if you can consistently start to make little changes over time, that's going to make a huge difference in your life mm -hmm. rather than trying to start this whole new thing and, and do add an hour of exercise or add an hour of whatever it may be. I'm going to cook every day. And it's like, how can you modify? Yeah, and I love that. I think when people come in and say, Chef, how can I start to eat healthier? And they're like, I'm going to stop drinking caffeine and no processed food and no sugar and no dairy and no meat. And I was like, you're, that's like really hardcore. Like that, it seems really overwhelming. And so that lasts for like a week. So why don't we just cut out sugar for today, just for today, or maybe for this week, see how you feel. And then next week, why don't you cut out your caffeine or alcohol, whatever else your thing is, right? That's not making you feel good. Right. And I see a lot of it in my restaurant, the first 30 days, January, it's my biggest, busiest month of the year. Cause mm -hmm. everybody's like, I'm paleo, I'm gluten-free, I'm healthy. And then usually end of February, right after Valentine's Day, it's like, chef, help me. I need a cleanse. I'm like, I've, I lost, I lost it. I lost myself. So, 
it's like going back into teeny little habits and trying to find that balance. Um, and I mean, I'm human. I, I can run myself too fast with, with work and not find that balance. And I had to put the pause. Last week I went away and I did like kind of a, a cleanse and a quiet time to go inward because I wasn't, I wasn't taking my own medicine. I was consulting and cooking, but I was getting up during the day and cooking for this beautiful food. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I, my day wasn't complete and balanced because I wasn't planning my meals and I was just grabbing whatever, not unhealthy stuff, but still it was just felt frantic, you know? And I really want people to hear that because yeah. There's nobody on this panel, in this world, that is perfect in every way, shape or form and is always um, acting you know, accordingly even to their own advice. Like sometimes we do, get, we do slip up and I am trying to find that um, balance, if you will, between how do I make sure that I take care of myself but still go hard because I love what I do. So how do I shift and I've noticed, at least for myself, that it's never just, okay, I found this perfect point and that's it. It's, it's a shift, right? It's every so often I go for too far one way and then every so often I go for too far the other. And what I do is I make it important to know, like, let's say, um, like pillars and like, okay, Lisa, if this happens, if you're not sleeping well, if you're getting less than six hours, if you're waking up tired, it's a red flag so that I can train myself that when I'm doing things to go, okay, I don't want to spill over. So put these little markers in, if you will. Um, do you guys have anything like that to identify when you're pushing yourself too much and getting into a very unhealthy space? Oh yeah. For me, I mean, mine goes back to like my breath and how I'm feeling in my body. And I know I've talked to you about this a lot mm. too. I mean, breath can literally change our state of being in our nervous system. And it's the same thing of saying like, you know, someone scares you and you're like, and you breathe into your chest and everything gets really tight. So if I'm feeling really tight, if I'm feeling really overwhelmed, if I'm feeling a lot in my neck or my headache or whatever it may be, I know that I'm in this heightened state of being. And so of course we're gonna have knots in our stomach, we're gonna have um, tightnesses, pain, all these other things. And so I, it's just, it's catching myself when I'm getting in this moment of like, frantic, even if I'm sitting in traffic, mm -hmm. even if I'm, you know, if I heard something and I got like stressed out about it, like just a couple weeks ago, I heard something I got stressed out about. So I immediately, um, turn on the bath. I was like, I had to do work that night, but I was like, you know what, this is going to take a break. I'm going to take a bath. I'm going to journal what I'm, what I'm feeling. And and then I, I did a little bit of work at the end of the day. And then I woke up and did a workout. I felt amazing so it's coming back into those tools for myself of where i can tap into that slowing down in my breath getting into my system again turning on that parasympathetic when i know i'm in that high stress state give me a quick breath breath uh, training yeah so if we can breathe in and out through our nose first of all all throughout the day and the night it's getting more nitric oxide actually within our bloodstream when we're breathing in and out through our nose which is actually causing vasodilation and and helping our bloodstream to be able to open up and pass oxygen and everything throughout our our brain our body everything so much easier so it's so much better if we can breathe in and out through our nose just for brain fog or anything like that energy um, and then the next thing I would suggest, it's like we always go back to this, take a deep breath. So it's a shorter inhale, it's a longer exhale, and it's taking more time in that, in that softer phase. And it's, ex and it's allowing your stomach to relax, it's allowing, it's allowing your rib cage to relax, and it's allowing this breath to come in a 360 pattern where you're not lifting in the chest, but you're expanding from the rib cage because underneath your rib cage is your diaphragm, which needs to move. Mm -hmm. And so it's just allowing yourself to relax, take a, a breath in through the nose, allow the belly to fill up and the, expand and then breathe out nice and slow. So it's like a four second breath in, an eight second breath out. Sometimes you could do holds at the top or the bottom of each one. And even if you need to like put your hands on your belly and your rib cage and like, where's my movement coming from? Is it coming from my chest? Is it coming from my belly? And so getting back into these habits and these practices of how can I, I know I'm going into the stress, I know I'm getting stressed out. So how can I turn on my parasympathetic? Cause we can turn it on and change our state just by starting to tune into breath.
I used to think everything you just said was the biggest load of woo woo <laughs> ever. But, and I'm being honest yeah. because I want people at home to really like pay attention mm -hmm. to what you're saying because peop some people are going to dismiss you. Yeah. Some people are going to dismiss you guys for everything we've been saying. And I want to acknowledge that, that I get why people will dismiss because they have a certain perspective and viewpoint. Mm -hmm. And for me, I did as well until my digestion really hit up because I thought like you, like everything was just about food, right? Yeah. Just food is what I put in my body. That is all that counts. And then I remember the first time I got on the phone to a doctor who came very highly recommended and I was sitting there with my food diary. I was going to read everything out and they turned around and they're like, okay, so what do you do when you eat? And I was like, no, 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 let me tell you what I actually eat. And they're like, no, 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 I don't care what you eat. What do you do when you eat? I was like, this is weird. And I was like, well, I work. And they're like, okay, so what do you do when you eat lunch? Well, I work. What do you do when you eat dinner? Well, I work. And so she's like, you have to stop working when you eat. And I was like, that's silly. Why would I do that? And they're like, because of your breath, because of the time that you're not like taking time to um, engage your breath, to engage your, your system. And so I was like, this sounds like rubbish, but you know what? Wow. This makes such a difference, which is why when you talk about breath, mm -hmm. I, I think it's so important for people to hear exactly what you said and try it at home for themselves. Yes. Like you can dismiss it all you want, just try it. And if it doesn't work for you, then it doesn't work for you. We don't breathe enough. No. And I'll be out and I'll be, my staff now is used to it. <sighs> <laughs> no, and I'll be at the, I'll be, and someone's like, oh my God, are you okay? I'm just breathing. We don't breathe enough, you know, and I'll breathe in the car and I'll put my hand on my diaphragm and sometimes I'll like slap my thymus and like, oh, like do that. And I'm driving and screaming and just like opening up and breathing. And it's everything it really is. And like I set my alarm for two o'clock every day and it's my self-acknowledgement alarm. And when it goes off, usually I'm at like a 10 running really fast and it, it, I pause and I at least, if anything, take a breath. I've literally had clients on the table where they've had pain for years and all I'm doing, I'm like barely working on them. Believe me, what I'm doing on your body is not what's going to make the, the epic changes. And we were just getting her to breathe again and, and what that feels like in her body. Tears, mm. crying. Mm. And I've had this happen with many people where all of a sudden they're like, oh my God, my pain went away. Or at least reduced to such a significant portion that they're like, what did you just do? And I'm like, I didn't do anything. I taught you and I facilitated the path into how you can start to talk to your body, how you can start to release this restriction, release this guarding. I mean, our body is just protecting us. Mm -hmm. And if it feels like there's, there's stress and there's something scary happening, it's going to go into that protective, really tight, spasming type state. But if we can allow it to say, you're good, relax, like calm down a bit, then we can start to move into, okay, why did this happen in the first place and how can we really find the, the cause and the problem? And a lot of times, sometimes it's just that. Mm -hmm. It's literally just being able to get back into your, in tune with your body. I, I love that. I feel like that speaks so much into how the foundations, like things that I know, just like what you were saying before, the idea of like breathing deep, how that is going to relax me when I'm like in traffic or something like I have a big meeting or something stressful is happening. But basic things like that, hydration, regular sleep, these things, I feel like right now in our culture, we're always selling all these products, all these, you know, this um, fix it pill, this yeah. superfood, yeah. and all of those have their place in time. But I feel like it can also illustrate this idea that it's inaccessible for certain people, or it's like, oh, I can't afford that, so I can't do that. Or, you know, I'm not in that space, so I can't even try. But the foundations, they can have such a huge impact. And I feel like it can be very empowering to get back in touch with that and realize, okay, what are my basics? Let me make sure that I'm feeding back into what my needs are on a foundational level. Yeah. Yeah. And um, also you spoke about, you mentioned it slightly earlier about like the environment and the people you're around. Um, I don't think people associate health with that. And that's why when you said it, it's like, I love that it's so really much. really powerful. I'm yeah. so glad you said that. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I completely agree with what you were mentioning before earlier about I focused all on nutrition. I was like, nutrition is the key to everything. Nutrition is medicine, absolutely, all these things. And it is, but yeah, there's so many other aspects to our lives that can impact how we move about space. So for example, if the average um, environment that you're in is like everybody's self-deprecating, you know, everybody is just putting themselves down. The moment that you give a compliment to somebody, they have to like kind of bring themselves back down almost. I've been in spaces like that where I almost feel the need to do that because I'm, I wanna make sure everybody's comfortable in that space. 
and it's a normal thing, especially among women. And but it's important to look for new spaces sometimes, or be the catalyst, be that person in space to be like you were self-deprecating right there. But I'm not going to feed into that. I'm going to highlight this other thing about you that's beautiful as well, and just moving on from that. How would you actually handle that? Like, what okay. would you actually say to somebody? Okay, so for example, maybe if I was in, if I just ran to my friend and I said, "Oh, your your skin is glowing right now. I love that. What are you doing?" Well, and then they automatically say like, oh girl, I just popped a pimple. There's some concealer on that, blah, blah, blah. Like, <laughs> yeah. don't, don't yeah. think I'm perfect, you know? And it's just, um, you know, and it's, it makes sense to want to say that, but I would just immediately say like, well, you look gorgeous either way. You look gorgeous yesterday. And just moving on from that, you know, like not staying in that space where they brought up that other mm. topic. But something that I was learning in nutritional therapy and just for, in general for most practitioners, when you're working with somebody, a lot of times we want to be like, you should take on this healthy habit for this, this, and this reason. You put them in a position where they have to defend themselves. Instead of doing that, creating a space where they can compliment themselves. So for example, with that, with the example of, um, oh, your skin looks beautiful. And then they go to self-deprecation mm -hmm. of, oh, well, my acne and this and that. You can say like, oh, well, I remember you mentioned that you started drinking more water, right? Like, how's that been for you? And kind of highlighting and sh shifting nice. the conversation to that. Um, that's been beneficial, I would say so. But you know, also self-deprecation serves a purpose, being real really? serves a does? purpose. Absolutely, for example, on YouTube, I was so afraid of mentioning that I shifted from being vegan to vegetarian because mm. online, it's like a huge thing to be right. vegan. But that opened the conversation of so many people saying like, oh, I'm vegetarian too, and I'm trying to figure this out. And it can bring up a more constructive conversation. Right. So it's about moving into a constructive space with what you're you know I, about. I love that and it'll help yeah. people because then you you're more relatable and stuff and then Absolutely. people it starts the conversation because when I I struggle with adrenal fatigue that's usually my wake-up button and then that I'm going too fast back to that whole balance thing mm -hmm. and when I I got on Instagram I was like oh I'm fearful I'm gonna be judged people think all this stuff and I was like no guys hey I haven't been on Instagram in a while I'm struggling my my adrenal fatigue it's real I feel pretty down in the poop right now, you know, and I can't tell you, I got flooded with like, chef, can you share? Like, what do you do for adrenal fatigue? Me too. I suffer from the same thing. Like, what are great foods? What, what are you doing for it? And so then I just started sharing more like tips about it, you know, and just being real, real about it, but not letting it define me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, well, I just have adrenal fatigue. You know, it's like, no, I mean, I know now the like the steps and the tools of slowing down. I usually have to get a hard wake up call for my butt to slow down. <laughs> I mean, we, I think it's humans do. And that's like one thing that I was actually going to ask you guys, like how, because I'm assuming a lot of people that are listening and watching this are doing it because they've had issues. Yeah. How do we prevent it? And that's, I mean, still a struggle that I haven't figured out. I have that struggle. I mean, I just hit another fat adrenal fatigue crash two weeks ago, and that's why I went away last week to like really get reconnected mm. to listen to my body before those crashes comes come on. But when I'm in my like super flow, which I feel like I'm in such the flow and creative zone, like I'm at a 10 at all times. I wake up, I'm ready to create, I'm ready to make a difference. And I have to honor that. If I try to force like me to like slow down a little, it causes me to have a little anxiety. So when I'm in that creative flow zone, I do it, but I schedule myself one day, just like an appointment on, um, on my calendar, a self-care day. And that makes sure that when I'm in my mode of going crazy, that at least I know I can sit and like check in with myself one day, that's not a lot to ask. And then my two o'clock alarm stuff has been helping me. Yeah, I, and I think you know, when, it, when it comes to prevention as well, it's being, being more self-aware of how we feel. You know, like you mentioned before, it's, there's a purpose for pain. Mm -hmm. There's a purpose mm -hmm. for acne. There's mm -hmm. a yeah. purpose for bloodshot eyes. There's a purpose for, Every, everything that we see in our exterior, it's a reflection of what's going on yeah. internally. Yeah. So shifting from seeing like, oh, I feel so tired right now is a problem. Sitting and thinking like, okay, why am I tired? Where did this start? How, how many nights has this led to? If I'm jumpy, I think, mm -hmm. is that from the coffee? Is that from this or that? So becoming aware of what my body's trying to tell me, those are the first sort of signs. And a lot of times we're, I feel like we're in a culture right now where we're constantly telling our body what to do. Okay, you're gonna be up right now. Yeah. Okay, you're gonna go to sleep now. And it's, I would say that a first step to preventing that adrenal fatigue, preventing that stressful state is becoming more aware of what our body is telling us and taking small shifts towards that. So for me, I had a huge problem with coffee. 
coffee and the adrenals is not the best mix at times. (laughs) And so when it comes to the habit change, becoming aware of that, it wasn't just going cold turkey because I tried that before and I literally felt depression and that is a symptom Mm -hmm. of withdrawals. I shifted towards matcha green tea. Mm -hmm. I shifted towards what types of teas do I like that have caffeine and taking that sort of shift in that direction. But being aware of the signs of the jumpiness, of the lack of sleep, uh, the feeling more alive and awake later on in the evening, those are all signs oh, yeah. of that th- adrenal imbalance. <laughs> and then paying attention to that, I feel like is a big step. Yeah. And being on being honest with yourself when you have those feelings yeah. and really identifying them. And then also it can get tricky. And I, at least I found myself in this situation where I, for four years, I was having doctors tell, telling me things and each doctor I was going to was telling me something else. And eventually I was like, I need to, own it I need to take control of it myself and I need to start looking into what makes sense so I was always tired I still am always tired and I've had so many tests done and everyone's like oh no things seem fine things seem fine and then I heard an interview about thyroids and hormones and I was like I'm gonna go get I'm gonna go myself I'm gonna get the test I'm gonna take them to a doctor that I can trust that can read these specific results and she looked at them and literally yesterday, she turned around and told me I have um, hormones of a postmenopausal woman. And she just told me that yesterday. Mm-hmm. I've been doing this for four years. And that's the first doctor that ever said that my hormones are that out of whack. And I was like, I knew it. I was tired all the time. I knew yeah. it. But I kept listening to the doctor saying, no, you know, no, your, level, your levels are in range is what I got a lot. But just own it, right? Like no one knows your body like you yeah. know it. Yeah. And I feel, like, I feel like that speaks into being an advocate for ourselves. You yes. know, I, I feel like something that we're, I'm so happy that we're transitioning a bit more into with the advent of the internet yeah. and the information out there is that we're learning more about ourselves and what works for us as individuals. And you're right, we, we are the only person who knows our bodies best. And so rather than going to the doctor and just being like, fix me, Um, being a little bit more proactive and Mm -hmm. seeing like, okay, well, that's what you suggest. But I also noticed this about myself and just being more empowered in that space and reminding ourselves like, no, I know my body, you know, so working, collaborating is a huge thing for sure. Yeah, I love it. Well, going to what you said about the information on the internet, let's talk about that because there's so much information, right? Oh. Like even us, we're sitting here doing a show about health. So we're giving people information. They're watching other things. They're listening. It can be so overwhelming. 100%. What advice do you guys have for someone that right now is sitting there going, yes, I want to live a healthy life and you're getting fad diets. You're getting this advice. Try this, try that. How do we know? Well, I know for me as a a YouTuber on podcasts and all this stuff, I am not a doctor. I'm not yet a nutritionist and I make sure to make that clear. And I think that it's really important to make sure that the information that you're getting is sourced from reputable people first and foremost. Oh my goodness. How do you know who's reputable? Let's get really nitty gritty. I would say going to someone who's licensed, an actual doctor. Um, People ask me for like, how do I do this with my hair? And how do I, how do I do this? And I'm very clear, like, I don't know your personal health history. And I, but I can direct you to people like yourself, you know, um, people who are professionals in that field who are putting out reputable information. So um, I think being transparent in that space and being picky, you know, just because you Google the first thing when it comes to clearing your skin, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the most reputable just because it's on the top of Google. Yeah. Um, And that's what's important too with comparison mode of things. It's like, well, why are you going to someone and why are you seeking their advice? Is it because of how they look? Is it because, because everybody responds differently. Yeah. And like, I, I have muscle and all these things because my mom, like literally this is in my genetics. Like I, I lift my own body weight, but I'm not like, that I don't do like cross that I'm not that strong when it comes to literally lifting weights and a lot of people think that's that's it but it literally like this is my body type and I've actually had to learn how to accept my body type for being more muscular and being called the Hulk in high school and like all these other things like I've had to learn how to accept that Mm -hmm. and so don't just go to someone because you're like well they have this I want that 
everyone's, we're all so different. It's, all I'll so different. post something about food. I just did um, one of my blog posts and someone texted back saying, oh, I didn't think that that was unhealthy or that's good. And I said, go ask your naturopath. We're all different. I find I found my best healers um, through word of mouth, mm -hmm. um, acupuncturists, functional doctors, and all that kind of stuff. How about we ask our mom, our aunts, yeah. our family members who have similar body types or maybe similar digestion, mm -hmm. what worked for them as well. Yeah. Um, I think that there's a lot of benefit to that in a lot of ways. Sometimes not always, but that can, that can be very helpful as well. I think that for me, um, I have um, Pan-African, Caribbean, Cuban background, and it's crazy connecting with my cousins and seeing what worked for them when it came to clearing their skin or getting more energy that my friend who has a more European background, things like, um, you know, Tai Chi, um, yoga, things like that completely worked for her. And it didn't work for me and that's okay. You know, especially with fad diets and all that stuff out there. It's like, why isn't it working for me? I've been eating cashews, cashews is a superfood, <laughs> yeah. but I'm like, it's messing with my digestion. And being okay with the fact that, okay, that's a great suggestion, but it's the critical thinking. Yes. It's listening to what we think yeah. and going back to the collaboration with the doctor mm -hmm. or with our healthcare practitioners. Um, so not just being like, no, this is my body, this is what's up, but working with them, right. hearing what they have to say and what their experience and their knowledge is and respecting that, yeah. but also bringing into play who you are. Yeah. yeah. I've started to um, biohack a little, so I've got the aura ring, so I can track how much deep sleep you got, how much REM sleep you got, how much activity you did that day. And so I'm making my own correlations now, mm. not comparing myself to anybody yes. else, and just saying, okay, huh, interesting, I ate more meat today, and I actually feel a little more energized, you know, and I slept better. So figuring out yourself, and then I also had a um, continuous um, glucose monitor, mm -hmm. so it's this thing that you literally attach to yourself, and you keep it on for two weeks and it tells you where your blood sugar is when you eat. And so I was doing it next to my husband who is, you know, I, my background is all Greek. I'm 100% pure from Cyprus. My husband is a complete mutt, bless him. But he's got so much different um, mixtures of uh, cultures in him. And so when we were doing tests, we were eating the same amount of food and we were sitting next to each other and we were having the same exact food and we were checking our blood sugar and our bodies com respond completely differently. My, um, my heart rate goes up, um, my resting heart rate goes up, my body temperature goes up and my glucose shoots up, it shoots back down again. His, on the other hand, goes up and stays up. Mm. And so just understanding, okay, well, if someone's telling him, hey, eat this food because it's good for you, and he finds, yes, it's good for me, my body probably won't respond the same way as he does. So going back to like awareness of how you feel, mm -hmm. how your body feels, how every moment of what you're doing has the effect on the results you'll look like, it's so important. And I feel like it's such, it can be such an empowering space to see that, okay, my body is reacting to the paleo diet or the vegan mm -hmm. diet or, you know, all of these different trending things differently than other people, but that's okay. Yes. And yes. that means that I can take the next step to find what mm -hmm. does work for me. Yes. And that's okay. You know, like yeah. it's, I feel like there's just such a, an empowering space with understanding we have an, a bio-individual makeup. Yeah. It is empowering. And to be able to feel a hundred percent, like that's the, uh, that's living optimum health. Right. And I feel like a lot of people are so used to walking around me included in the previous years of just tired, bloated, gassy. And it's like, I'm not nothing's really wrong. And um, I can attest that with my family. It's like, well, I eat beans, um, they make me gassy. And it's like, well, let's talk about it. Like yeah. what, maybe you shouldn't eat beans. And like for years, it was like eggs, eggs, eggs. They might be healthy for your body, your body. It's finally did the elimination diet. I have to tell you, I walked around, you guys, bloated, gassy. I felt like I'd had 10 shots of tequila the next day. I was just used to it. I was used to just kind of feeling, eh, right? I'd mask it with caffeine. I cut out eggs. I'm telling you, I feel like superwoman when I, and so people say, oh my God, chef, you have like the strictest diet. And it's like, no, I've just become, I'm just desperate to feel a hundred percent. And so I'm not going to eat even like healthy food. It's not necessarily unhealthy food. Raw spinach and eggs make me feel crappy, but I can have a glass of organic wine and some French fries. They don't make me feel crappy. You know, it's just like once you know. So but we had pizza the other night at an employee staff meeting. They're like, isn't this so hard for you? And I was like, no, not at all. Because I can go through 
what everything on that piece of pizza is going to do to me. And I know I'm going to be constipated and hung over tomorrow from that piece of food and feel like shit. And it's not worth it. And that's where the goal should be coming yeah. from, right? Is like, how yeah. are you feeling on the inside? Inside. Yes, that is, that's huge. I mean, I literally grew up with like, gas x was my friend yeah because too. oh my god i had bean and cheese burritos bread chocolate milk all oh, the yeah. things like i just thought it was normal like yeah. oh my mom had stomach issues i'm gonna have stomach exactly. issues um but like i would have to go to the hospital because i couldn't eat for a week and my wow. stomach would get so bad and i had no idea what it was coming from well for years i've been putting anything in my body mm. anything and i remember even like my, my nose would get stuffy when I would eat sometimes. And it was like an allergy. It was something that my body was reacting to. And I had zero awareness, right? So going back to awareness of what this could be coming from. And once I started to observe food and learn about it and see what worked for me, and I tried different things. I tried things across the board, but not because of what one person told me, but because of it, I was searching for how my body would feel. Mm -hmm. And I would listen to many experts, but again, going back to credibility, and that happens in the fitness field so much too. It's like, just do this exercise, just do this workout. Mm -hmm. And it's like, for what purpose? If someone's not able to tell you the purpose behind it and what it might do or might not do for your body or what you should be feeling or shouldn't be feeling, like, are you listening to them or are you just doing it because you want to look a certain way? Mm -hmm. That's it, right there. <laughs> that's like mic drop, girl. That's, that's, that's like, no, and I'm done. I was like, all right, later, guys. Episode's over. No, um, that's the journey. That's the work. That's the yeah, gold nugget, right it's there. It's true. It's so true. <laughs> yeah. Well, and um, before we leave, though, please tell everyone where they can find you guys all online, um, all the great stuff you guys are doing, and then also for the final question, what is your superpower? Let's start with you, Alina. Well, um, you guys can find me on Instagram at Hey Alina Alive, and my name is spelled A L I N A, so Hey Alina Alive. And I'm working on Wellness Con. It's all about body positivity, um, inclusivity, and in the wellness space. And so you can just Google Wellness Con and my YouTube channel is Alina Live, so yeah. And I think my superpower is adaptation and optimism. You know, it's all, it's not about what happens to you, it's about how you adapt, and I'm very thankful for my mindset. That's so Beautiful, cool. thank you. Amber? All right, so for me, where you can find me, my Instagram and Facebook is Chef Amber LA, and then I have a website that is chefamber.com and I have a blog and that's where you can find my online cooking class series, Cooking with Chef Amber. I have a, a restaurant, if you're in the South Bay, Source Cafe in Hermosa. My superpower, you know, I believe that I am great at manifesting, but also helping others manifest, really inspiring others to manifest and allowing, um, creating space for them to do that also. So that's my superpower. That's so cool. I love that. And Jen? Uh, you could definitely find me all things Doc Jen Fit. So easy. Um, on Instagram is mostly where I'm most active. I post all my videos there, education wise. And her cool poses and <laughs> insane moves. Insane that she does. things that the scoliosis can do. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, Facebook Doc Jen Fit, YouTube Doc Jen Fit, um, docjenfit.com. So really all over the place. I have the mobility method, which gives you a full self-assessment to see where you might be restricted within your own body. And then you picking the exercises that are needed for your body so that you can heal. Um, and then also the optimal body, which just gives you functional strength, core, um, mobility, and I'm adding mindset tools too, because it's so important. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so that you can start to get into your body on just like a daily practice. This is what it's about. It's about bringing awareness daily into your body. Um, and I would say my superpower is compassion because that is what I provide people when they come to me with pain. Mm -hmm. And I, and I help them to provide that for themselves. That's <laughs> Guys, guys, thank you so much for joining us. These women are so incredible. I've had so much fun and learned a lot. And like I said at the beginning, I always just want to be the student. And I hope you guys are too. And you're learning from this episode and from these incredible women. Go check them out. If you're not subscribed, click that subscribe button. If you're not following me, at Lisa Billy, go follow me. And guys, until next time, go be the hero of your own life. And peace out. 
What up guys, Lisa here. Thanks so much for watching this episode. And if you haven't already subscribed, click that little bell right in front of you. Click, click, click away. We release episodes every Wednesday, so be sure to get notified. Till next time, go be the hero of your own life.